Hey, hey, hey. Today's, or this video, I should say, is topic is about, again, chi-square, but this time, test of independence or association. Okay, so this video will not be as long as the other one, so let me get it started. I'm sure you can read through all of this, but this is the point that I want to mention so you can see the difference between chi-squared for homogeneity versus chi-squared for independence. We're gathering it from A, from one SRS, and then we arrange them in here a two-way table, so like a, a yes or a no, or a good, bad, indifferent type idea. But this is the thing. It comes from a random sample. So here we can talk about a random sample of high school students, and then we can separate them into freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And then, because they came from a random sample of high school students, we can break it into categories in terms of their grades. Then we could do a chi-squared of association to see if there is any association or relationship um, between the, their, um, their high school level, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior, versus what their grade point average. And again, as I said here, we're trying to investigate the relationship. And the question is, is there an association? Is there any type of relationship between the existing variables? Okay, how we test that is here we're testing for an association. How is it different? We're uh, analyzing the relationship between the variables. We're comparing a categorical variable for several populations of a treat um, versus a treatment. So but we're doing one random sample. That's the way I see it. But let's see as we do other things. So as we go to problem number 47, please read over it and let me know when you're ready. We'll pause. So we have a random sample of young adults and this is what I was referring to. So it's all young adults. And we have here, where do they stay most often? So they looked at young adults, so the one random sample of males and females. And why do I have those two numbers circled? I've forgotten why. We'll see in a minute. And then now take a minute to look at this entire output table. Now I've color-coded it for you, but they're nice enough to tell you right here. Your expected count, it is under your observations. So your observations I made yellow. Your expected count are printed below it. And our contributions are in the blue. So there was a person that asked today what... Um, Ishman asked today, how do we know... Okay, they tell you. But to be honest, in most input-output tables, this is how they print it out. Also, let's notice other stuff they give us here. They give me the p-value, my degree of freedom, and my chi-value. So we don't have to do that calculation, so all we have to do is answer their questions. So question number one, should we use a chi-squared test for homogeneity? <coughs> Sorry, I tried to stop that cough. So we have a single random selection, and the subjects here are classified by answer. So we can see here are their answers. And therefore, yes, we can use the chi-square for independence. The next question is we want to state the hypothesis that we're performing. Now, slightly different than before, there is no relationship between the gender. That is your HO. HO no, H-O, no, H-O, no relationship, okay? So we're basically saying there's really no difference, but here we're a lot more specific because we're talking about a chi-square for independence, a chi-square for an association. Here, no association, no relationship, which leaves our H-A 
Okay, there is an association, there is a relationship between the gender and where the people live in the population. Now, if your thoughts are, if it didn't say true population, Ms. Yarbrough, aren't you missing that? Well, I did mention population, so I'm okay there. If you want to say in the true population, you can, because you feel better about that, that's fine. The next thing I want to look at are our conditions and assumptions. Well, here we didn't, we randomly select the, um, the young adults. Yes, we did. And we have the 10% rule. As we look at the 10% rule here, we're looking at all young adults are going to be greater than um, the 10 times the 4,854. Last but not least, we know we still got to deal with LCC, our large count condition. And as we look at our large count condition, let's look at our expected count as greater than or equal to 5. And we didn't have to do any work. Why? Wait for it. All remember everything in orange. They already gave us the large, gave us our expected count. So here we don't have to write it down and then confirm it. We saw it before we even did it for once. Now, as I go to the next page, the next page is saying we need to interpret the p-value. Oh, here we go for the interpretation, and then they want us to do a conclusion. So interpreting. So assuming that the HO is true, we're assuming that there is no association between the gender and where young adults live. There is, and there's your p-value, a .012 chance of getting a random sample of, that's the number of people that we sampled, um, adults, young adults, that show an association as strong or stronger between where they, um, where, the young, where the young people live and their gender. And I didn't put down my final conclusion, so let me pause so I can write that down. So here we have a p-value of 0 0.012 that's less than our alpha of 0 0.015. We are going to reject the HO, and the rest of this you're going to have to write down. So therefore, we are going to reject the idea that there is no association between where a young person lives and their gender. And there we go. Done, son. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I am going to make another video, maybe later today. Come back and do it on um, another chi-square for, homo um, for, I don't know, homogeneity, independence. We'll see. I'll see you. Bye-bye.